All right, class, so today we're gonna to be talking about pinch pots. All right, so what do you guys need to know about clay in general? All right, so let's start off with some basics. Number one is we have clay right here, big old honk and log of it. Uh, notice how I've got it wrapped in plastic. You need to keep it wrapped in plastic, otherwise air gets to the clay and dries it out. Air is the enemy of clay, that's the number one. Second thing that we need to go over is humidity. So, what is the humidity in the air? The humidity in the air is the... Um, water droplets, the moisture in the air, that changes how we use the mark with the clay. Now, because we're, now my classroom, uh, we have no windows. So the humidity is, um, it's set by the AC unit that we're getting... Extremely technical. The big thing I want everybody, all of my class, how much humidity is in the air. So check the Weather Channel app. Look, Go down, look at uh, your Doppler radar below that. Uh, somewhere where it says the stats on what the air quality is, it'll also tell you the humidity. Now, the humidity that when I'm filming this is about 70% because it's raining outside. Anytime that you're going to have uh, rain in the forecast, it's going to rain, that's going to provide you with a little more time for it because you don't have to worry about it drying out as fast, which is really nice. Uh, unless it's due, and then it, you're screwed. So, FYI, I'm clay out of my bag here. Now, a couple tools. Number one, your wire tool. Now, your wire tool, I'm going to cut myself off a little log. And make sure you're wrapping the clay back up if you're not using it. All right, let's just set that down there. All right, students, you guys need to know how the changes happen to the clay. So what changes are going on during this clay process? So as I'm sitting it out, uh, I want you to guys record in your sketchbook, notepad right here. So I want you guys to record just basic characteristics of the clay. Is the clay sticky? Is it cold? Um, is it squishy or not squishy? Uh, how squishy is it? Uh, these are little characteristics that you need to know about clay because that changes day to day in how the clay works. Uh, if the, there's a little more tack to the clay, um, it could be that there's actually too much moisture. The, the clay shouldn't really be uh, sticky, but it can be depending on what's in there. Sometimes if, um, uh, like if I'm making a special batch, I'll make a special, special batch of clay where I'll have newspaper or uh, toilet paper because toilet paper actually works really well in there and I'll make a batch of paper clay and the clay will become sticky the first couple days in process because the clay and the paper have to homogenize and make one harmonious bond uh, otherwise it's this goopy mess that just sticks to everything so the, write down some characteristics of the clay what how is this clay so this is your day one clay that you're working on this today you're not working on it any other day this is all day one clay i want you to record again that stickiness is it cold is it hot um is it squishy is it how squishy is it how firm would you say that this is because that plays into if it's uh if you can squish without much pressure and get a decent change in the clay it's good fresh clay but if you gotta press on it really hard the clay's more dried out and you got less time to work with it. But right now, as I'm holding this, I'm, this stuff's drying out, so I'm getting less time to work with it. Grab yourself a glob of clay. We're gonna roll it up into a ball. I could use these, but just for process. Now, basic pinch pot. Roll up into a ball of clay. Now for the basic pinch pot, we're gonna take that ball of clay and we're gonna take our thumb and you're gonna press your thumb into the clay. So it sits on the thumb like this. From here, you're gonna pinch and twist. So, we're going to pinch, twist, pinch, twist, pinch, twist, and you just continue to roll that around your hand. And as you're rolling it around your hand, it starts to rise up. Rise up. And you then have a simple bowl in your hand. Now, big thing that I want you guys to take reference of, and we're gonna do this a few times, because I want you guys to understand what's going on with the clay. I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna cut it right down the middle, separate, and look at it. All right, so I want you guys to take reference of how thick that clay is. As, it lo as you look around it, I want you to see how the clay, how the thickness changes as you go around it. And then also look for like little divots, like parts of it that you poked through by accident um, because that changes in how you work. So over here, I can see that my base, the bottom area, is really thin, super, super thin. 
So this bottom part right here is super thin, but the sidewall is much thicker. So I want to be able to squish this thin so that it's all even. Even is the key. We want to make sure that everything is even. We want to make sure that everything is even so that you have a uh, consistency across the entire piece. Otherwise, it's going to fire funny and it's not going to work. And because it's going to fire funny, it's not going to work right because of that change, that augmentation in the piece. Going over... Uh, ceramics in general one of the biggest things is a piece should weigh like it looks <laughs> so right here i have one of my skull mugs and the piece should weigh like it looks this piece is relatively light uh and you can see how thin that wall is at the top of the skull that each of those pieces each of the components of this is all the same thickness a one is the same thickness but b it, there's a consistency across the board even at the bottom at the at the base down here it's not super thick that's the key you want to make sure that you have you want to make sure that all of your piece is the same thickness all around so a it fires the same also b you don't have to worry about trapped air pockets so we're trapped air pockets so as I'm building a piece let's just actually take this bit right here and I'm just gonna stick it right on top of that clay now as the piece is firing if there's trapped air where let's say all of this is sealed up okay i'm just going to move it all around i'm going to take my wire and slice it through the middle through that section right there open it up we can see that there is a section of the clay that's actually ripped open there's trapped air in there if this part is sealed up at the bottom so i have this air pocket inside of the piece if the pocket of air is inside the piece it will try and get out now what how is it going to get out it's going to get out any way it possibly can which could be blowing up your piece should we look at an example, kids? So here's an example of what happens if your piece blows up in the kiln. You can see the shards of shrapnel of this piece that blew up. I love how this guy's like ducking and covering over here. And some of the pieces take that are next to it tend to also suffer that damage. So make sure that you're not trapping those air, the air pockets in the piece. It's like nom, it's awful. We've made a pinch pot. We've gone over air pockets, and we've gone over recording element, recording sections of your clay, recording um, in your sketchbook changes in your clay. Now, as you're doing those changes in the clay, I would recommend writing down times because as the time of the class progresses, now my class is a 90-minute class. Your clay is going to change a lot from 90 minutes, 45 minutes to the first within the first 30 minutes. Make sure you're recording what time frame you're working in. Uh, it just helps make more consistency so as you're working on future pieces you can use that as a reference map to figure out how long you can work on certain things um, it just makes your life a lot easier in the long run okay. as you guys are continuing on in your pinch pot techniques one piece that I love working on that I think is just a fun piece to do in the beginning when you're exploring with ceramics and exploring how the clay works is this is the uh, free organic piece now there's a couple names that we've given this over the years uh free organic is kind of the most simplistic what you're going to do is you're going to start making a pinch bowl now as you guys are making that pinch bowl uh what you're going to do next is you're going to augment it and stretch out the clay as far as you possibly can stretch it make it as thin as physically possible all right so i'm taking my finger and i'm just kind of pushing clay around in the bottom to get it out from the very uh base of the piece so I can stretch it out to the to the walls and use all that clay that's inside there and then as I'm stretching out more now as I'm stretching out more out of that piece pushing that clay out to those edges I then can bring in some of my tools now one of the best tools that I like to use are these rubber stamps so these stamps are great to where you can apply a texture around the piece so as I put it around the piece I'm then pushing the clay into the stamp is one method. Uh, if you're rolling this through a slab roller, you can put it on the clay and then roll the slab roller across it. Um, great, puts that nice impre impression of texture or use a rolling pin, roll it on the clay. So as we pull it off, we can see that nice texture inside the piece. Cool addition to the exterior, just gives it something fresh, something different. You can then use carving tools like the this metal wire piece where you can actually pull clay off out to carve it up or to manipulate the clay however you want to move it uh, or using the other wooden tools such as a multi-tool this one I mean, all these 
wooden tools really do whatever you want them to do. Uh, we have fettling knives too. I like the fettling knives because it's a nice firm knife so that you can work, but it also has a bit of flex to it so it can get in those tight to reach spaces. Uh, nice blunt edge to work off of uh, to get all those nooks and crannies. Now, as you're continuing to push this out, really stretch that edge. So pull it out away, organically manipulate this, however you want to do it. It doesn't have to remain a bowl shape. It can go wherever it needs to go uh, to just become an interesting piece. You could take the base, hold it up in your hand, rise it up more to where it almost has a column that's sitting off of. We're not really going for pretty, we're going for stretchability. How far can we really push this stuff? So this piece I've gotten stretched out pretty far out. I definitely want to stop here so that I could show you guys what this thing looks like through the center, uh, give it some sectional pieces. Now the big thing to remember as we go through class is this, is that my students work is my students work, my work is my work, and the two should never really cross. Make sure that you as a student are coming up with your own thoughts, ideas, creative abilities so we have some interesting pieces overall so you can see how we have a nice consistency that we got over here I did not finish over in that one corner but how far we could stretch out this this clay get this nice uh, thinness quality to it the one thing as you work is I want you guys to take notice in the edge of your piece focus in there the edge of the piece these things will start fraying and ripping apart and what you do for those sections when it starts to give it that edge. I keep water glasses close by. Uh, grab one of the clay brushes, dip it in the water a little bit and just use the water to paint and smooth out ripples, uh, any part where the clay is starting to bend, uh, warp. All you're doing is you're melting bits of that clay together so that you're, you have a smoother consistency so everything looks more polished. It's just a quick, simple technique. You definitely want to do this as you're working throughout the piece so that as you're working, you don't have a lot of chasing to do later on where you're having to clean things up. So now we can see how, see that nice, uh, smooth edge, just painted some water on there, so now I have that smooth edge. You can see back here where you have the ripples again. Grab my brush, paint on, let the water melt into the clay a little bit, smooth things out. And then you have a nice smooth edge to work with and glaze and everything looks nice, pretty, and it makes it a whole lot easier to work with. So as you're going, make sure that you guys are chasing chasing the edges, making the clay as thin as you possibly can make it. Uh, really press the envelope on that. Um, and as always, make sure that you're clean, cleaning up your messes afterwards. Make sure all the tools are in the correct locations. Stamps back to stamp location, tools back to tool location. Extra clay, we have a recycling program at my school and we recycle all of our clay so that they go from here into a bucket uh, that is then pressed down to recycle again. We have a pug mill that we run the clay through so that nothing is ever wasted. All this clay will be used for future projects. And as always, class, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys. Okay. So, first thing that all my class, all my students need to know, I keep referring to my class and to my students and back and forth is back this cockpit. First thing that my, my class, my students need to know, I will get this right eventually. I will. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, working on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe, see you guys later, next class. Follow, see you later, next class, do your homework. <laughs>